On the previous episode of the Earth Headless Mod Project, we went ahead and applied some finish on the body, got it buffed out, got it nice and shiny, and now it's finally time for assembly. So let's get to it. What's going on everyone and welcome to part 6 of the Ert Headless Mod Project. I'm super excited to get this done so we're going to jump right into it. I went ahead and threw the neck in the neck joint and you can pick up the whole guitar without screwing it in. So that's a sign of a great neck joint. Uh, Ert did really good there. Nice and snug and that's what you want to have. So then we threw the screws in. As far as the screws, you want to just make sure when you're tightening them, you do it in a nice even pattern. You can do a cross pattern or whatever works best. Just never tighten one screw down all the way and move on to the next one. Evenly go around and screw them in little by little and then snug them all up slowly. And then once they're all snugged, you can go and tighten them all to their final tightening point. Don't want to over tighten them because that's how you get those little hairline cracks in the corners. You guys know what I'm talking about. You see them in all used guitars that you buy at like uh, Guitar Center or something like that. Uh, and then I went ahead and put the stock strap buttons back on. Nothing fancy there. Uh, and then it was time to put the ground wire in for the bridge. So I used a thick guitar string to clear out the route for the ground wire. And uh, no issues there. Went right in. Uh, stripped a little bit of new fresh wire back and so we had a good contact for the bridge otherwise we'd have a nice noisy guitar and you don't want that so always make sure when you put the bridge back on and make the contact with the ground wire where that wire is contacting make sure the paint or powder coat is removed from that area it's pretty much the key to having a good contact or else you're not going to have the contact you need and you can run into problems down the road uh, so we used the stock bridge i was going to change it but i decided to use the stock bridge uh, i'll explain later why uh, so i threw a towel down you always want to throw a towel down when you have a nice fresh beautiful clear coat that way, if you slip with a screwdriver, you don't ruin your nice work. And then you're like, it'll, it literally will ruin the rest of the job. And you probably won't even want to do it because you'll be too worried about that nice scratch you just put across the top of your body. Uh, so we went ahead and put the saddles back. And I numbered them when I took them off. So they all went right back into the spots they needed to go in. And there was even little indents where the screws were so I could find where the original intonation points were. Now I'm throwing thicker strings on it anyway, so I'm going to have to change that later uh, anyway. So that doesn't even matter, honestly. So the story on the pickups is I threw the original pickups in. I took the chrome covers off and painted them white. Now I ordered a pair of Seymour Duncan's uh, white Seymour Duncan's actually and only one showed up you'll see which one it is here momentarily uh, so if you guys see a neck pickup out there floating around let me know because it's missing and yeah I didn't want to delay the video anymore so we put the stock pickups back in and then later on I'm going to throw the bridge pickup in you'll see here soon and we're going to keep the neck pickup stock for now until that mysterious Seymour Duncan neck pickup decides to show up in the mail. So here I'm just kind of mocking things up. Uh, I bought a new three-way switch and a new push-pull volume pot. Uh, and they're a little bit different than the ones I had when I mocked up the guitar. So I was just making sure everything still fit. And the only difference was the nut for the new push-pull was a little bit bigger. So my wooden knob that I made uh, ended up not working. I have to bore out the bottom of it a little bit more just so that nut will fit. Otherwise, the knob would be like way up in the air and I just, it looked kind of crappy. I didn't want to do that. So we ended up just throwing a nice black knob back on there. Uh, different one from, you know, the factory because I wasn't really jiving with those ones either. And then the black knob matches the black bridge. So it looks really good. So as far as this bridge, let's get into a little conversation here. A lot of people hate this bridge. A lot of people complain about it. Um, I like the bridge. 
like I said, I was going to change it, but it was more for looks and not for function. I believe that if you set this bridge up properly and you, when it comes to winding your new strings on there, you do nice tight winds on those little wheels inside the bridge and you do everything properly, you will have a nice stable tuning guitar. Uh, the strings from the factory, uh, they were decent, but you know, from sitting and everything else during shipping and sitting in warehouses, I'm sure, you know, things just loosen up and probably aren't the best when you get them. So if you're having tuning problems, change your strings, set the bridge up properly, and I can almost guarantee you, you'll be fine. Uh, I haven't had one tuning issue with this guitar, so I'm going to keep that bridge right where it is. So we threw some Ernie Ball 11 gauge strings on there because I'm going to put this thing in either drop C or drop C sharp. It was an E standard or drop D when I got it. I think I had like nine gauges on it. Uh, so I threw a little bit thicker strings on there and I uh, can't wait to see how that is. So here's the new skateboard wheel platform I made to solder up my new uh, three-way switch and push pull pop. Here you can see how the cavity turned out. It looks really, really good, nice and neat, not many wires. And uh, we got that all soldered up and ready to go. And here's the new bridge pickup. It is a Seymour Duncan uh, Trembucker Distortion. Is it a TB6, they call it. Now, the difference between a Trembucker and a Humbucker is real simple. Um, if you have a string spacing from E string to E string that is greater than two inches, you most likely want to use a Trembucker. So like a Floyd Rose or any kind of tremolo or bridge system that, like I said, is greater than two inches of a string, string spacing, a trembucker will be great. And it's basically just going to put your string dead center of the, the magnet. And believe it or not, a millimeter over to the left or right will really, you know, change how your pickup reacts to your playing. So um, a trembucker fit perfectly. And the strings were pretty much dead center of the magnets, which is what I was looking for. I'm really excited to see how the Seymour Duncan sounds because I've always been an EMG guy. And I was super excited to see how a passive Seymour Duncan sounds. Uh, got great reviews, so I was excited for that part. They give you plenty of wiring. Uh, more than you need, honestly. It's kind of like the length of a neck pickup wire. You can like really go anywhere you need to go with it which is always good so i was just making sure i had enough length between all the wires to go to the push pull and to the switch and um and then you want to braze your wires you always want to put some solder on the wire tips itself that way you can just hold the wire where it needs to go and then dab the soldering on gun on it and then boom it'll hold right into place. You don't need to blow on it. A lot of people blow on their soldering joints and you're really not supposed to because you can end up with a cold soldering joint later. Yeah, I'm sure it probably works, but they say not to, so I don't. So we got that all soldered up and got the wire all wrapped up and put in the cavity neatly and the red and white wire went to the push pull and... The black wire went to the three-way switch and the green and bare wire went to the ground on the switch uh, or it can go to the ground on the knob. Uh, either one works. So we got that all tidied up. Um, got the ground wire and the cavity all tightened up and just was going over things. I was pretty confident that I did my job correctly. So I put the back cover on and I mean, that's a pretty bold statement there. Usually, if you don't wire things correctly, you're usually hesitant to put the back cavity plate back on because you know you probably have to take it off. So putting it on in advance after I was done, pretty bold statement, I say. So we got that all hooked up. And uh, yeah, I was super excited. A little nervous because like I said, I never played a Seymour Duncan. I was a little nervous to see how I was going to sound. And I'm literally going to make you guys wait till the next video to see how it sounds. Um, sorry. But you'll thank me in the end because it'll be worth it. Uh, there's going to be one more video to these, this series. I'm super thankful you guys all stuck with me this long. 
gained a good amount of subscribers during the series and I'm glad uh, a lot of good positive comments and uh, I want you guys to do your own projects and have fun with it so we cleaned up the body and uh, yeah the next video is going to be the final reveal and the final see how this thing sounds and I'm super excited so real quick guys I want you to tell me I have this old Schecter and uh, I don't even know what it is, like an Omen 6 or something like that. And I have this old LTD uh, Alexi 200V. Tell me which one you want to see as the next project in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.